Oh, okay, so yes, yeah, so I appreciate that. So I am going to trip over this, but I will try not to. Um, so I have a presentation. I'm a professor. I can't help it. Um, but I also <laughs> want to hear from you. So there's often times I might pause and be like, stop. Yeah, what do you think? So definitely, though, please do feel free to, if you have a question, interrupt me. This is not meant to me be me just rambling, but I will if you let me. So <laughs> just, just know that. So, okay, so a little bit, yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you for the introduction. So I am very new here. So I'm just saying I'm experiencing each new season and loving every single one of them. Um, so I'm going to keep this in. It's like winter. I know. Talk to me in three years. Yeah. Coming from southern New Mexico, I was like, the snow is sticking to the land. This is amazing. So, so yeah. So I'm, but I'm still kind of like feeling like being the dryland scientist. I'm still like meeting with a lot of people, and I'm still feel like a little bit like a sponge. So I'm definitely excited to learn as much as I am talking about things I think are kind of cool right now. So, you know, assistant professor. Um, so I do have a, a lab, like a research group that I work with. Am I in your way? Can you see? No, you're okay. Um, so, so what does my research group do, right? So students coming and going and learning a lot. We spend a lot of time in our research group. So we're, we kind of more on the applied side, but we also like dip our toes in the basic. And we want to spend a lot of time thinking about like what is the need and can we as a group evaluate tools to then help, did we clear up that need? Do we identify a new hole? What do we need to do? So this kind of like the circular, like what is needed, and then what are those tools that we can that we can assess? So that is something that we think about a lot, um, and we actually um, try to think of these novel ideas too, right? Because coming from dryland, water limited is a big thing, but it's not just water. Nitrogen, nutrients are a big one. We're often multi limited, like we're limited in a lot of things. You add water. That's going to be helpful, but that's not going to actually restore something, right? You need potentially other items as well. Maybe you don't have the seed base, maybe you don't have the nutrients, et cetera. So, so really thinking about what are these actions that we can overcome these barriers. So that is what our group is now talking about and thinking about. And we also kind of, like I said, we kind of span this ecological restoration idea. So the actions that we're actually the practitioners, like what are we, the actions we're taking? And then we, as restoration ecology, well, what are those actions? What are those outcomes? So if we see these degraded sites, we want to get them to reference ecosystem. What are those trajectories? What are those trajectories we see changing and why? Again, that cyclical process. This is the coffee, right? Because, <laughs> and it's, hopefully everyone's had dinner. Um, I know, thank you. Can I'm you tell? <laughs> no, it's so I didn't good. It's, no, I feel bad because I'm such a pacer. I cannot <laughs> Okay, so no, that's good. I think we're oh, that's uh, a barrier. Yeah, barrier. That's a barrier to the barrier. Actions and outcomes. Yeah. Actions and outcomes. Yeah. Identify yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We did. We planned it. That was the melted butter part. daughter she's such a baker and this is like this is serious this value added right there there we go so you can see but that is like that baking process or the puzzle building process like we can put those actions in place but we want to actually see about like what are those trajectories what are the directions so yeah so awesome so thank you so this is my favorite <laughs> but it looks the best to me um, so this is this is something I've used, and it's kind of like it started. I know some of you know Matt Fowker. Um, it started from that 
Bauer's work as a scientist at NAU, and it has like morphed, so I should say highly modified. So if you don't like it, don't blame that. It is definitely on me. But what this is, this kind of <laughs> framework is something that takes that what actions to take. So what are those barriers? So identify need, right? That cycle. And we know, as many of us have tried many projects that are some are more successful than others, you know, so sometimes that chance of success. We know going in, but we got to do it. We're going to put in, we got to say, what are those barriers? Maybe they're so great that we, we know the chance of success is low, but if we don't do anything, we have to have some kind of action. And then that is coupled with how much intervention, how much, how much actual energy and action do we need to put in, right? So is that kind of that, that chance of success, that intervention needed can actually influence that success rate. So then here in the middle, this is maybe you don't need as much intervention. You have a higher chance of success to, I actually need a lot of intervention. My chance of success is low, but it's so dire, this has to happen. Um, so that's kind of how this framework kind of works. And so I'm gonna start on the easy one. Um, and I say easy, we all know that is not the case, <laughs> right? That is not, this is as easy as not right. Um, I'm gonna start with the one that our lab works with a lot. How about that? Um, because we know, so propagule availability, how many seeds are there is what I'm going to work with. Like I said, I just keep going, so mm -hmm. ask away. Um, so I'm going to talk about seeds for a lot of this whole talk, because um, we know how important seed-based restoration is. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but, I don't think I have a citation. I say that, is that's real? There is citations. I got to find them. INSR. Okay, I'm going to find that because I say it all the time and I'm like, I don't find it. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think you did because I think it's real. And it's way cheaper. And it's cheaper, right? But so, highly ineffective at the grand scale of things. You need to, you need to help them. <laughs> so yeah, so just putting, so not just, so putting seeds on, we know you, maybe you're limited. Oh, that's like, I don't want to give away the punchline. Oh, come back. Um, <laughs> we all know this. We all know this, but I want to, I want to set it up a little. But so yeah, so we spend a lot of money, right? We know that, and we should, and this is an effort that we need. But the seeding alone, tons of funding goes in, and we know that often that with seeding seed-based only, that we often don't have the best success rate, right? So sometimes it's needed, and that's less than 10%. And this is, I am, cannot help myself, I am very much a dry land scientist, but this does work a lot in that Western US framework as well. Yeah, but so just the, the pure act of seeding alone often isn't always successful, right? Sometimes it is, and that's phenomenal. Um, but we know there's this kind of these ecological barriers. And there's um, big papers that have come out not so long ago and very recently that we know that there's, again, these multi, multi layers. We know potentially it's water, maybe it's seeds, maybe there's a lot of different reasons. But um, I'm on seeds now, I'm going to take a component of seeds, not the actually active placing, but asking, are they? <laughs> so what, seed banks, yes. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> love you come visit our lab group anytime for that response. Um, <laughs> yeah, so seed banks. So are the seeds already there? So we I mean I started in my PhD thinking about yeah, seed banks, and then the seed banks have morphed into my postdoc, and then now I have grad students who are since graduated and currently working on it, like thinking about seeds, and this goes back to thinking about Let's think about this in a creative way. Because if the seeds are already there, we're putting on seeds. What are we doing? <laughs> Let's think about that for a little bit. Are um, you generally thinking that the seeds are already there? Oh, good question. Oh, so that's a really good question. Because we've seen, I mean, we work in some some sea horizon, crazy some crazy crap, and the seeds are there. So, and by well, and, and by I have to tell you the story of Milltown. When we unearthed the reservoir and the 30 feet of arsenic laden sediments on top of it and got a dorm I got a seed response oh from gosh. the cord plane that had yeah. been buried for 110 years. years. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And I just need to tell right. you a species Blueberries. Blueberries. Yeah. Willows that went to seed the next year. Not yeah. That's so 
That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah. So I wish you were here. You would have jumped all over studying that. <laughs> Because like what is we can unearth something else? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, 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 there's always someone with a digger. Exactly. Like we had that in California where you there was a trace map that was there for years and years and years, and they took it out and they're like, we're gonna have to see. And like as everyone was spreading, they just popped up. And they're like, hey, guess what? We don't need to see. We're here, right? Well, they take place the same course from like. Oh, oh sorry. No, no, no. I don't have that. I don't have it. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm I don't have it. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cheat. I'm cheating. Oh no, I'll go back. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. Because this was just too good. Yeah. No, but don't worry. I will. I will go back. I will stop. Oh no, sure. Yeah. So, so seeds. Wow. <laughs> this was in high school. So this 32,000, that's just wow. amazing, right? And that seed, yeah, I think it's a tiny, tiny. Yeah. But it was in this permafrost. It was in this squirrel cache, this permafrost. And this caches two dozen years. Rodent caches are some of the, like, you find some amazing yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for like those back kind of mittens. Like, oh you my can gosh, yeah. Research out of that. That's what archaeologists go to first. <laughs> So all oh, that's that's <laughs> 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 I warned you. We, have, we should call them in school because that would be cool. I bet they did. Like without any did they flower? Exactly. That made because they pulled like, right. live tissue from them and they were able to grow them and flower. Wow. Yeah. But I don't know about the pollen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but. That's pretty amazing. Like they actually have this like this little glass case that they're like, do not touch the <laughs> <laughs> so Yeah, so it's but that's super cool, right? So there's two thousand year old palm and I felt kind of bad for this two thousand year old palm because it was super exciting and they even reference it in this article. They're like two thousand years old. Like, what the hell? What does it mean? Like, right? And then yeah, love it. Greater than 200 years. Yeah. Right? So there's a reason that they're like quick. They're quick to come up. There's a disturbance. They're like, and the reason we can say 200 years is we don't actually know. Like, it's probably longer. Right. Right. But that's like the longest, like, recorded. And then now, oh, yeah. So it's probably longer than 200 years. Oh, it's right. Is that found in, in the U.S.? An introduced species. Yep. Huh. Yeah. And well, we, we did get. I don't know if it, this this number comes from there. Oh, yeah, I don't know how that actually been like. But we did yeah. get um, introduced species yeah. coming out of that historic flood. But it is hard to say whether that you know settled down. I mean, yeah. I have a quick question. Yes, is, please. Is that the same as like a half life, um, like a half life of like a sheep grassy? Um, oh, that's a good question. Like three so, or four years on them, right? So, so like uh, so it's so persistent. Um, yeah, yeah, kind of. So I think of the, the reason I'm hemming and hawing is I don't know if it's a one to one because this is a good point, right? But I think with the soil, when it's in the soil, so that's more like if you're going to store it, right? So you're going to store it under these different conditions. Yeah. Um, these are more like they're just out in the. Well, this would be something else, but but like this is like it's out in the soil and it's like the elements are there. Like decay, right? Decay, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so different species have. Like some um, sagebrush is like a year, right? This so, stuff throws viability out the window. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. You don't know what's going on. Yeah. Something like to me, I was like Milltown. It was the arsenic. Yeah. <laughs> I think it preserved like yeah. that seed that it came through. Something. Good. Well, that's a good. I don't know. Or it's just like it had such conditions that didn't right. vary. It's no just oxygen. like no oxygen, yeah. one yeah. stable yeah. temperature. Yeah, that's right. That's cool though. Well, they they put the seeds. We can talk about this. Yeah. 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 Done. Yeah. Well, and I, I don't actually talk about it here. We do have a there's a PhD student Ryan. Maybe some of you met him last week. Um, and he's looking at like we're trying to predict seed bank longevity and seed bank persistence in soil by soil type. 
because oh. it's how it's gonna how the soil moisture and all that relationship soil properties calcium and acid rate et cetera et cetera. So like we're trying to actually get like a predictive map for the Intermountain West that could be and then ground truth. So that's so so in that idea. So like we're trying to like. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm, I'm in. Um, I feel like I often have to convince people about seed banks. I do not have this crowd. No, um, no. So, so that's great. So there's something you go to and you rely yeah. on it. Exactly. Oh, well, there's my. So I, I don't even need to give you a talk. Um, Um, the California super bloom? Yeah, like what was it? A gray? I pushed back. Can I push back? I think as long as you do the arrow, just don't hit enter. I just pushed back though. Yeah. What happens when the ecologist does There, we did you go back? No, no it's forward. forward. Oh, no. Sorry. Oh, no. It's okay. Oh, no. Yeah. I don't want to mess up the recording. What are you doing? I'm on PowerPoint. That's yeah. The tops of the recording. Yeah, that's the problem. It's okay. Are you sure? Yeah. I'll you send it. So what I what what I zoomed through to talk about that was just this the, the life cycle, the mm -hmm. thing, and what, what comes and goes. Um, and then now we can go back. Why do we? So so all the things. It's okay. It's okay. I don't I don't want to. I don't want to mess with it. So then I'll take one slide back. And this is where I think everyone has kind of already that framework is there. But using inner restoration, it's one of the first things you go to, right? But it isn't the first thing that, as we all know, everyone goes to. And often we think about them. A lot of times we think about them as kind of a hindrance. And sometimes they are, right? Like you get cheatgrass, you get these invasive species. We often think about them as this kind of like, we gotta get rid of, we gotta deplete the seed bank, we gotta find a way. But then also we know that sometimes there's higher, often higher diversity in the seed bank, higher density. So a lot of this can be used in our restoration actions. And then, so okay, so we talked about, so that was like my summary of those slides that we cannot go back. Uh, Oh no, it's totally fine. It doesn't not not even worry. Um, so so then okay, so they last for a really long time, or they last for six months. You have transient seed bank, you have 32,000 years in permafrost, right? High variability. Um, but the amount of seeds is one that could matter because if I'm gonna actively put seeds on the landscape, the species definitely are important, but how many? Like what is the propule pressure that I'm This is a fantastic with? question. I've struggled yeah. with this for years. <laughs> yeah, well, surely. No, it is. Science. Yeah. Can I have a bunch of plants? There's a new plan to build. Well, I'm trying to be bonkers how people come up with seed vectors, and I don't know the answer. Yeah. If you look at reclamation seed vectors, and you look at seed vectors for a monotype of grasses for ag, and it's like six to seven per square foot. Yes. But then you get into restoration mixes, mm -hmm. and people are have 50 species and 120 per square foot, and I'm like, what in the, what are you thinking? They're thinking like, there's money in the back of that restoration project. Well, this is and it too. Yeah, this it's not like right. Seed, this is like granite seed telling me to do it. And yeah. I just, I would really like to know, maybe you're getting there, but. Oh, I don't know if I have any answer. And maybe every <laughs> ecosystem is yeah, well, different. Yeah, well, yeah, and that will actually, yeah, so that's kind of my, that's a, that's a really good point. So, so I did a lot of my PhD work in California in vernal pools, so temporary wetlands. And we were finding an average per meter squared. Oh, well, that makes me feel bad. Wow. <laughs> that? That's, I, I started with these pictures for a reason. I started with the reason. Right, so 21,000. We had one or a couple that had 121,000 seeds in 
per <laughs> meter <laughs> square. Yeah, you wrote every single one. Soil. In the soil. Yeah, in the soil. Soil is seed banks. What you took? Yeah. Yeah. No, actually, well, that actually, that was that was I messed up. So what are we? How did how did we get that? Yeah. Yeah. So how so. Five yeah, centimeters. Five so, centimeters. so the five what? centimeters is this like magic, yeah. like because you think yeah, about if it's right. too deep, yeah. unless you have something unearth it, the seeds probably they might stay viable, but they're not going to actually be able to like germinate. It's just too deep for them. Yeah. So we got, and then and you also there's a number of studies that you see. I'm a special pacer. There's a cord back there. Technique has been applied though. <laughs> so what we so there's a bunch of different ways the emergence method. There's um, actually one of my PhD student is looking at like an analysis of like what works and what doesn't. There are you can float the seeds, you can do that. We found for viable seeds, it really is that emergence. So you take soil samples and then you grow them out in the greenhouse, you give them the best possible conditions. And I say this for like 11 months, <laughs> it's not a quick process. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes a ton of work. Uh, but I did actually a study of my grad's um, work where I pulled out. I should have done it in a different system. I don't know what I was doing. But so I pulled out every seed oh. of the soil. Ant head looked like seeds. <laughs> it's a disaster. <laughs> but, like, but I pulled out and I just like could not. I like break all the. Oh, it was just a disaster. And then I did this and I the emergence trials were way better because you don't know if it's viable too. So you want to get that viability. So we do the emergence trials exclusively in our lab. Um, they still take a lot of time. They do. And so that's part of where we want this predictive model so that you don't have to. So no, we're not going to know every single species. We're not going to know every single thing, but we want to get kind of a, so you don't have to do the 11 month trial every single time. Well, so is the 21,000 viable seed? All viable. viable. Yeah, at five centimeters. I mean, we didn't do the, I guess I didn't count that many. We, we had sub samples and then scaled into the, yeah, yeah. Okay. But yeah, but this is, and these are highly dense seed banks. So I started with them saying, Phew, that's that's a lot of and seeds. Relatively untouched -ish, yeah, reference, reference ish scenario. So great question. So this is a combination of reference and restored. And so okay. yes, yeah, so you're dealing with so yeah, I could these are like kind of spring fed rain fed. Rain okay. So yeah, so yeah, so good I just threw them out there. So these are rain fed and this was actually a long term restoration project that had a lot of invasives, that had a lot of natives. And it just, they're 98.5% annuals, so they rely on that seed bank. So they're inherently, yeah, like we have like two perennials, and the perennials are like the brown matter. Like they're, yeah, yeah, in this system, in, in the vertical form. So if you're thinking about this wet dry cycle, yeah, but, yeah. So what's the germinate rate for seed? Like is it similar to the 10%? Good question. So, so, so in this system, in this system, um, they very much wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, dry. So they, I don't know exactly how many, because it's a really good question. But they maintain a huge amount below every year. So they mean they don't not not every they don't have the space for it. But it's it's a very small percentage that germinates every year, and it has those right conditions at the right time. Um, and so I would say it's less than 10 percent for sure mm -hmm. yeah but they are still maintained in that long term and these this is the train right over there uh, the, where it got removed so these are long lived these are built these kind of are built to be seed bankers like that's their these vernal pools not necessarily the up ones but the vernal pools are built to be dense seed bank yeah natural. system natural yeah like birds yeah, like birds. One also just like well, in the, that climate year, right? In that precip year, and so it's almost like, they well, I'm going to build a seed bank if I'm nature. I'm like, I'm going to build a seed bank, <laughs> and I'm going to have like, if it's like a shit year, if it's like a 10% water year, yeah. I'm going to have some seeds for that, but not that many. I'm going to have right. That's exactly right. If it's a 50% year, I'm going to have a lot of seeds that can survive yeah. in that, and you're just slowly just building that genetic that. diversity. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So when you're talking about like emergence rate, yeah. that's like a favorable condition. For that 
population. But there's like a subset of that thing yep. that's really favorable. But other ones they can like tolerate maybe drier, right. colder. Yep. Or, or they need more water or they need water at a different time. Like the actual like germination cues are all different. different. Yes, absolutely. So is your mom going to get it all back? Yeah. No, no, we're just like our seeds that were like we're in we're in the yeah, that is his case. We're in the like soils are a seed refrigerator. So that's where like this first round is yes. Yeah, we can't get it that. But I do there is some work um of maintaining the Mexico a PhD student of mine is looking at this genetic diversity, like what comes up and what stays. Around so the genetic diversity because you do have multiple populations inputting into the seed bank and then when when does right. it come up so that population relationship in the genetic framework is what one of the PhD students is looking at so but no our model will not last that, question on yeah. this one slide no. it's probably supposed to be ten seconds no no it's okay well, it's like they're putting one in one thousand with non-native versus native oh, oh. Right. you can just wing it. So it actually, so this is what's really cool. I took it out. Ooh, I had more, okay, yeah. there more data or more data. Well, so that's the cool thing. So we were seeing, so this is a beautiful photo. This has a bunch of natives. We were seeing a ton of invasives above ground, but we were seeing more uh, natives in the below ground. Really yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but like the amount I had to get my, like I took it out. There's like a 50 50. Like, yeah, so you were seeing, but they, but that also is telling you something, right? There's a barrier. Like, why aren't they? So it's probably yeah. competition. Those, those invasives grow yeah. earlier, they're bigger, and they can outcompete. Yeah. Um, they have to spend longer to, right, to build up that season. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly right. And so because they have that higher viability or longer persistence, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, oh, I should have left it in. But yeah. Yeah, but about yeah next time. But about I would say we found depending on the pools, about 50% below ground when I sampled was native, but the above ground was like 90% invasive, 10% native. So it was like the ratios were more off. But this is like super cool. Like these are like seed bankers. I got started in like most seed bank rich. But a lot of times these. So going back to your numbers, these drylands that we think of. So this is a master's student in my lab, just got it published, was really excited about this, where she found roughly, she had a number of sites, we're not saying all of the Great Basin has this, but in a bunch of her sites, we found about, you know, these warmers, 2,300 seeds per meter squared, 1,200 seeds, 500, 500. So there's still, even in these, what are considered depopulate seed banks in these drier systems, you're still dealing with a kind of a higher, Bank density than we often see on top. So that's where, so that's pretty, I think that's pretty, yeah. pretty interesting and pretty telling. And again, I can go into the details of this, but the, the key here is that, like, even when we think of these drier systems that maybe don't have as much, yeah? What are the polygons again? The oh, polygons? sorry. So these are individual deserts. Oh, great question. So Great Basin, Colorado Plateau, Sonoran, and the Chapalan Desert. Yeah, thank you. Does Great. her paper relate above ground densities to like expression to the what's in the seed bank or is she just looking at the seed bank? She does look at um, like richness of above ground, below ground, and then functional group. They don't match. And I didn't get into that at all mm -hmm. this time, but they don't like above ground, below ground rarely match up right. because when you're sampling, kind of back to your questions, when you're sampling the above ground, you're seeing those that have the conditions. That were expressed when you're sampling seed bank conditions weren't right. So there's often this disconnect. Um, but that also is what we think we see. We're like, oh, this is what this system has. But because it's not expressed, doesn't mean in another year, 10 years, five years, that that actually this system might have what we need in a seed bank. Yeah. Would you be looking at the densities also? Yeah. Like, I'm just looking at it and thinking, why? They're like some 
annuals. annuals. I think that's what we were thinking. There's more annuals. Like we have more annual species in the mix here. And these are averages over a number of sites. So annuals are generally more seed bankers. Um, so, and we have higher, like, higher density of annuals in the bottom. Yeah, there's more. Big, small shape. Oh, seeds? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Yes. But I don't feel as confident about that. I feel confident about the annuals. Um, where here we had a lot of the perennial. Like, that's a really good question. Yeah. Well, I mean, no, big seeds, like we have mesquite seeds in the study. We do a bunch here. I mean, these giant mesquite seeds. Yeah, they're there all the time. And they're a real problem for pain. <laughs> but so so there was a little bit, but I would say we're probably more towards the smaller annual, smaller seeds that can have that higher persistence. Because she did sample um, when we wanted like to be like just getting the soil seed bank. When we when it was peak veg vegetation, so everything that's been expressed, we wanted what was remaining in the soil seed bank. Yeah. Question. No, great. Yeah, go. Uh, smaller seed, higher the potential. Like has. the persistence. Yeah, persistence. Um, is that a thing? It just it. So yes, <laughs> but no. So it depends. So yes, but they still. You still. There's still. I don't know how. Um, so <laughs> yes. But not really. Cool. There's caveats. <laughs> I can live with that. Answer. I can. I like the caveat. Yeah. Like the ecology, that was such answer. an ecology answer. Like every like outlier yes. part of my brain. Yes, yes no caveats. Yes, no caveats. So that's yeah. that's two million seeds an acre. Wow. Um, at five hundred. At five hundred seeds a square foot, that's two million seeds an acre. And so even, even thinking about what we would do for a typical acre of putting <laughs> seed on the ground, this is like 10x, 5x, like what we would pay for. You do. Why you could design your seed making completely simple. And it's because the reason is Just that we know that those species we know are going to come in. Right. You know, I, I just got so sick of adding all this diversity and never seeing any of them. Yeah. This is making me feel like. Yeah. We we know those. But I have I, no patience. We know Tom, that. I think you're totally on it. I think that's totally it. Start the restoration. <laughs> you're not doing your seed mix till 20 years or 10 years after right. it's designed for the a initial seed bank rather than yes. initial cover. But no, not psychotically. So we make no. <laughs> 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 Let's keep the psycho out of this. Yeah. Right. Right. So like, like the sagebrush, like I keep using it, but it's like super quick. Oh yeah. Right. Um. And but if you if your seed mix is higher diversity, but it has higher longevity, like that species, not just like taking a plant community and the species in it and its abundance, you need to think about the shifting conditions and then the species in those conditions that are most likely to come in for. And will be waiting. They're not going to lose yeah. there. They're not going to be, you know, home or these big types of things. But, but they're going to be waiting, hopefully, in the soil seed bank to yeah. then be ready for when you do get those yeah. conditions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Getting a seed five centimeters would be really challenging in a lot of sites. Yeah. We saw the Great Basin Wild Rye take five years out of our seed bank before it even showed its head. Came in. And now it's it's like on its way to becoming like the dominant on the continental divide, you know, in the harsh in the harsh stuff. But it took forever. You know, we're sitting there, we're like, none of our seeds are coming in, but the native stuff loved the nitrogen. So whatever's in the seed bank, whether it's native or not, I'm like, I'll take it. Oh yeah. But it's interesting that I'm right? thinking about it because that was a logical dominant system when it was, you know. Untouched, yes, so that great basin doesn't share the nitrogen. No, it shouldn't, and it won't, except we're managing it for elk now, so now it's okay. 
<laughs> that's not that's out of my hands. That's out of my hands. It might be out of all of our hands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just quickly. <laughs> I may. Are you in like 10% no, real? No, it's okay. No, 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 no. This is great. I'm telling you, I'm just as happy. That, that was not meant to seem good. I just want to like keep it for people to sit down. Not people who need to sit down. So this is so this is the uh, student. So a PhD student who's working in, so these are ecological sites if you're not familiar with them. So different soil vegetation combos. But so here I say 1,200 seeds. Well, she was finding that actually the soil and this kind of, yeah. So the soil types themselves had high variability. So when I say 1,200, I'm not saying all of the chihuahuas. Right. But like, so like these clay, loamy, gravelly, maybe they're not ecological sites. That's not like, you know, yeah. Maybe they're not necessarily the best for seeds. Now, is now this also relates to the above ground, though. So, like, what are the vegetation? What is the input as well as the storage? So, we're trying to decouple that with Ryan's work, where it's because that could be all weeds. None of them. No, we don't no. have we don't have invasives really down there. We have layman's love grasses are one. It was almost all, and this takes away from what I was saying earlier. These are almost all perennials. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> And it's like one perennial that we call our like annual perennial because it's parabolous. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with that. Yeah, um, it has tiny seeds and makes a gazillion of them, so it acts like an annual in its actions. Um, but it's still a perennial. It's like a front ephemeral perennial. Um, but that was a big chunk of all of this. But it, but it was. I think she had 91 species total. This was with the Ornata experimental range. Um, so dry, dry system. Yeah, but so. Pretty cool though, right? So there's this crazy variability of like some just don't have much. And so right now we're trying to look at the sources in the sink. So where are these seeds going and where are these seeds coming? So input and output. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that was. Yeah. Oh, I can't go back. I'm sorry. Just the fact that I'm really sad of the Right, which like which I I know like you traditional mean? like seed viability experiments put seeds in sand. Well, like I want that is barren. Yeah. So sand is. I wonder if it's just they're adapt they're just adapted to the harshness of conditions. Kind of like riparian species that you know germinate under crazy conditions and so fast because they get one chance. Oh, I see. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, we were thinking something totally different. We were oh. thinking. Oh, I like that. <laughs> we were thinking that the sand if it was like a moisture thing. So if you think about clay, we don't get much rain, but when we do, it's like, uh, like monsoon. Yeah, and so like, so you need that actual uh, like percolation where yeah. it doesn't just like sit in these clay yeah. like, top layers. So six centimeters down from like harsh and baking is actually like Florida thickness. In, in comparison, in a super harsh I see, environment, I see, I see, I see. the seed on the surface, yeah. all you need to do is go incrementally like this far down yeah. in a shift soil to be okay. Right. Versus in a clay soil, like, yeah. you know, you may need for other reasons, you may need to actually yeah. go even further. Maybe. Well, and also, like, you can't, you can't. Right. And you like, can't. Like, physically, right, you like, physically like, can't move through it. Like, like, it's actually, you're stuck on that surface where, yeah, yeah where you yeah. have yeah. the soil. Yeah. 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 And that's again like what I was saying. My um, driving this so that we don't have to do these 11 month trials all the time with these small areas. But 
I mean, there's, everyone is already keyed in on this, so I love it. Um, so if you find out what's in the seed bank, how similar is it to your above ground vegetation of what either you have or want, um, that can help you. So if you know what's in the seed bank, like what am I going to seed? How can I, can I use that to help? Um, and some species are everywhere. Sporobolus, there's no sporobolus, something else will take that place. But some species, and, I, and we in the southwest often use sporobolus as one of our key like workhorse species. But it's like we're, we're like putting like 12 seeds on the landscape and then we're getting like 1,500 seeds per meter squared. So like, let's not do that. Yeah. That's agrostis for us too. Is it? So yeah, red top. Oh. Okay, yeah. That's the grass that's the entire seed that comes out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, so when we add the woodsy, there's species that aren't here. Um, and then we, we do know there are invasive species there. So, just <laughs> like when you know, so let's say you do have cheatgrass, so you have these others. Can you add species that are best able to compete with those invasives mm -hmm. present? So, actually using our ecological knowledge to say, hey, we know that this. Functional trait, these functional traits are there. What can we use? So that's just for thinking about that. Other thoughts. So that's my, that's all for my seed bank. I think that's it for seed banks. Yeah, well, but again, I can stop here too if everyone needs to go. Here's a, here's a question yeah. for you. What, what if you, you know, you do go out and spend a lot of money on seed and you get some seeds established? Yeah. Um, you know, like for example, like this Great Basin Wall Rye. In, I mean, it's kind of like an ethics question, but you have vegetation established, it's native. Yeah. Um, what's wrong with that? Right? Like, um, if you're trying to get to that reference vegetation. Oh, nothing. You know, you've always, like, so you're saying like adding in new species that aren't found in the seed bank? Well, just, if, if you're trying to, to like get back to your native, native seed bank. Um, oh. You're using right. pioneers as an intermediary right. yeah, exactly. to get to you, right? right. But then well, sometimes yeah. you have, you don't want to lose all your topsoil. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Is that a rush? Like if you yeah. don't want, if your bigger issue is down on my list of soil stability, <laughs> but like maybe you have a more triage in the triage mode, maybe you're like, I just need plants on there. Soil this, stability this was, was reason yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Long term, yeah. it's, it's health management and mineral range. So, you had to get and so soil. grass is better than conifer yeah. in that sense. But yeah. it was first, it was erosion control. I mean, what right. was driving it was super fun, contaminated sediment going into water. Yeah, so, so you know, the important point though with that is there's some species in your seed banks and in reference communities that will never exist on those landscapes again. Yeah. They yeah. were yes. only there because yeah. of the perfect condition. That's right. And that's that's so, why I got frustrated looking at these seed banks. Yeah. I'm like, that will never yeah. grow on that site. Maybe right. It was there maybe 200 years ago. Right. Totally. Yeah. So that's why we're always going back to what do we know is going to grow. And yep. let's yeah. make it like slender reed drift grass does not belong in the Park Fork River floodplain, but we see it everywhere because it's native and rhizomatous and we know it's going to go. And it goes and it's right. Yeah. It's going to take. And you're, you're trying to exactly. shift those conditions though. Mm -hmm. Right. And maybe in 50 years, these guys will come in and reseed everything we did, and conditions will be different enough that they can right. get some of those yeah. other species. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, too, I think that's interesting, though, so there's some, I completely agree with you, that you're not going to get them. They had their the history of that system. We're not right. going to get that back. But sometimes it can tell you a lot. Like, if sporobolus aren't germinating and there's seven quad million of them, what else do I need? Is it just water? If I just add water, maybe I need nutrient units. So if there's a ton of species that are in the seed bank, they might be telling you That's something. That's a really good point. Yeah. If you're only getting basic long rye yeah. or slender wheat grass to go, well, that really does tell you. Yeah. Like you have a super high diversity. Like, yeah. Maybe there's like some mm -hmm. micronutrient. It's yeah. not getting added. You know we're not using real soil when we use yeah. restoration. Yeah, right. exactly. So that's where we like thinking about them, um, like the species level, but also like like as a barometer, like it's on their like cytometer, whatever. Like mm -hmm. what are they telling us? Like if if I know that they're viable and I know if I can get them to grow in the greenhouse, like and they're ready to germinate and grow, it's not like like what are they? They might be telling us. Then and often we find that it's like soil stability or water. Water. <laughs> but but like there are other things, nutrients we found some nutrients, there's other um, components to competition. Like there's I'm a major in getting a mini 
are preserving it in, well, the, in the perfect manner. Now we have, we have systems to grill acid, smoke, dirt. Yeah, it's really nice. I will quickly reply all that work. <laughs> we just do some seed bank studies, I think, is what we said. But but it's a lot of work, but it's actually in use. Like, but it, they're, I don't know, they're ready to germinate. Like, they're viable. So, and we sort through them at the end, and we do find some that we haven't got, and you can then use those. But we get most of them. Yeah. So you're doing greenhouse experiments, you're doing green yeah. soil, and then you're also picking out all the seeds. So we, and then doing like, are you doing like petroleum tests or like, no, so we just say if they germinate, so okay, so yeah, those greenhouse conditions, yeah, yeah, well, they germinate, and then also like cold stratifying, mm -hmm. like, yeah, cold, okay. hot, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we put them in like cold stratifying for a month. It's just like you get your soil sample, you put it in the fridge for a month, like don't even just put it in the fridge for a month. Don't even think about it, <laughs> you just sample it all. You don't even open the fridge door, like it's a real thing that we every single one. Whether they need it or not, but yeah, cold sterilize some. Um, there's other ways to like. We've actually found that some actually need the heat, their own species. Um, so they just need some dormancy break or if they have dormancy. But uh, but yeah, no, it really we, it's it's amazing how effective it is. Most of the time, just water, and like with the fridge from up and sifting and the smoke though is an interesting one because it can like it's a germination cue, gibberellic acid germination cue. Um, yeah, there's so yeah, so there's definitely what's a natural source of that actually? Plants? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a hormone that plants make for like growth hormones. So yeah, so we can it's like you can get it in a powder and smoke. Smoke is for well that we did a smoke for like seeds that need that smoke to like break dormancy. That's so that was where we did a study in um so. So like we we thought maybe they needed it. I don't know if it made a difference, but liquid smoke like was fun. Heat yeah. associated with yeah. stratification yeah. for seeds. I never thought about smoke. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Smoke. So there. Liquid smoke. Smoke and seeds. But there mean. was. <laughs> 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 no, 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 no. Rocky Mountain Research Station in Portland. They actually have a smoke and seeds that they put in. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It breaks. Their idea is that it breaks dormancy. They're doing studies. It's not just like the serotonous one where the cones open. Like it is, but not all of them. I just like smoke because we use liquids. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Why I have like actually have a grant percolating from just that <laughs> because I actually think that we have these seed bank inputs are pulsy. I don't think of them as much as this like low right. level. I think yeah. it's actually big pulse events mm -hmm. like these super right. blooms, like because we talk about this 2018 when all the sporobolus, like everybody germinated, it's like a pulse event. So yes, there are these over time populations growing, but I think I I, I don't know. I just want to go study circle blooms, I think, but but no, but I have like I don't, so I don't have an answer, but I have a yeah. proposal brewing because I do think they are like these pulse events that maybe have a huge amount, mm -hmm. as opposed to like this one species that yeah. is every year reliable and yeah. it germinates. Right. That's probably a species strategy, but when you have these super blooms yeah. that like poppies are really flashy, right? It's like a 17-year cicada. That's right. Exactly. Yeah. That's what else, yeah. yeah. Exactly. What else comes to mind. Yeah. yeah. So you and have this why pulse. Why would the plant community not have the same? Yeah. And you're okay. making inferences on the history yeah. of viruses. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to understand the history and patterns and restore to that.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I usually give talks where I'm like, I only like to pay attention to the top five centimeters of the soil surface, <laughs> like seed banks and stuff. But they grow in that top, and that's where they often cyanobacteria, mosses, lichens. This can be highly variable. And the thing that's pretty cool is it is a biological community. So we're dealing with the same interactions. We're dealing with competition. We're dealing with a lot of really cool ecological questions we can ask. Also, we're greedy. Um, so this is like Bill Bowman took this and we all steal it and use it because it's like your quintessential crust, <laughs> right? So like they can cover 70% of a lot of systems. They hold the soil. So I'm going to go through this semi quickly. But um, so what can they do? So they can reduce sediment loss and runoff, increase water retention. You think about if you have these pathways, you get rain. It's got a lot more to go so it can actually infiltrate. Dust is a big one in the southwest. We worry about soil nutrients, so they can enhance soil nutrients. So, um, pretty cool. Vine crusts are pretty cool. Um, and again, usually I have to like convince people what vine crusts are. No. So, but I'm still going to convince you that they are everywhere. So this is British Columbia, very wet part, cold and wet part of British Columbia. Tons of vine crust, high diversity. Great Plains paper came out not that long ago. Pretty diverse biocrusts. And then even here at MPG, Matt Bowers grew up in Anita Antonica. Um, this was recently published, did a study on biocrust. You know, done a number of studies, but I just like to steal this one because it shows like this is just right outside our back. So, okay, so restoration talk. I spent a lot of time with my postdoc and otherwise. Um, thinking about biocrest restoration. So biocrest can be a tool for helping you get soil stabilization that just comes in naturally. But we also think about like the restoration component. Like we actually want biocrest on the landscape. Because in this system, this is Christine Young. Um, here you have an intact landscape. You got plant soil. You got everything you need. Well, without that biocrest, we're, we're hurting. Right. That soil stability is a big deal. A lot of less nutrients, etc. So thinking about that, so it's kind of this thing where we want to restore biocrest for the it's a community that does has this ecosystem function, but it's also a biological community. We have to think about how to restore it. You can't just add it on there and it's like great, I'll grow. Done. Yeah, you can't buy that. No, store. no. I just trying to grow. They have. Never hear about someone fertilizing for biocrust. No. Or creating some sort of mix not, no, for biocrust to get biocrust. To get by, well, never yeah. in my life have ever done this. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's we do, yeah. We do oh. talk about this. Yeah. We do. Okay. We do. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, hold on. This is new. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not up here. Yeah. So we kind of think about the restoration process, right? So we know we can use recycled garden as a major resource, but we do need to use the active leaches. That is a real thing. I wasn't diminishing that. Well, you still have to get those inoculum propules. Same idea with biocrust. So again, you know, as Nico, um, Anika, Adam, KSU, a bunch of researchers are looking at, do I get cyanobacteria? How do I cultivate them? Do I put them in a greenhouse? Do I just take them and move them? Um, Nicole Barker, like a bunch of people have been looking at these kind of different phases of how do I grow biocrust? Because we don't want to just go and like, dig it up and then move it because then we're causing bigger degradation. So this is a huge push. Um, they're doing a lot of work at MPG um, looking at these plant interactions and biocrust. So a ton of work there. What do I, what does biocrust need, right? We know that plants need certain things. Well, biocrust might need something too. So shading, if I can get it shaded, maybe that will help. Surface roughening so it doesn't blow away because we often put the inoculum on how much is dry surface? Little. Like little. So we're thinking like micro. Like furrowing. Oh, yeah, that's even that's like, like just like a little, that's just so they have. There. So if you think about like if you're a tiny little biocrust cyanobacteria, like you want to be on the cool side. Mm -hmm. If you divert habitat diversity and add it's a micro scale, yeah. a very small scale. Very small. Very small. So, so, but we did, we started like, oh, let's just. You know, smooth this out and put it down away, so and then it can catch. So, so there's, so there is um, a lot of cool work, and then assessing is it working. So it's definitely in a much earlier stage 
and the Bioquist Restoration. Tons of amazing researchers working on this, but it is in the earlier stages in our seed based restoration. Um, but there's some, yeah, the Nita College, it's really like the burrito. I don't know if you know it. So, like, they have this like burrito where they like put the moss on it and they roll it up and then they like put it out in the field and they unroll it. Yeah, and it's like <laughs> if you're doing a peat lamp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. So, so there's a lot of cool work. So that's where I wanted to start there. But I am very much. And so um, our group has been thinking a lot about these plant biocrust relationships. So this is another master's student <laughs> who I had took this cool photo of like, hey, here's some biocrust and some plants working together. Um, I'm going to go through a few studies that we did um, just to show you stuff. So this was out of Moab. So we collected field soil. <clears throat> And then we put no biocrust and biocrust and grew them at the same time. So seeds planted in that in, oh, wow. in the soil surface. So this That's is with biocrust and this is without. Oh, Does anyone know what this plant is though? Grass. Uh, what kind? Uh, <laughs> it's cheap grass. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. I can see that. I shouldn't have said that. I know. We call it our pet collier, but it is a so. But these are super best. We actually had it. We're doing a cheatgrass study. So this is the thing that we're talking about. These grow so well. We have 99% germination. But at the same time, this is this is telling that like it's a plant that can grow fast. It can take yeah. advantage. So if we use the species like, we want, yeah. But I'm not done. Don't you worry. Well, but like establishing biocrust wine because it's grown cheatgrass. Well, so it might. So this okay. is what's cool. I'm, I got a slide on that. This is what, I usually like sneak past that this is cheatgrass, but I couldn't. I couldn't. No, so no, we no. actually planted it in the bio crust. So we like 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 drill seeded basically, but put it below it. So it's actually within that thick bio crust layer. So it had the perfect conditions. There's cracks and it can absolutely fall in there, but we actually kind of cheated the system a little. And I have a slide for the meta-analysis that will make me feel a little bit. And it does. I mean, we've seen oh, it. Yeah. We've seen it come up. Yeah. Yeah. Cheat grass? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So you're saying the bio, yeah, the bio yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Are there like workrooms? Are there people studying like, okay, well, then you can't make a bio crust, or things you can do to like kind of create those same conditions? Yes, absolutely. So we tried, and we actually used this in tangent with um, bio crust restoration, but we like dirt flew. What it's called. So like dirt. <laughs> so it's like a polymer that's like holds the soil in place. We were trying to get biocrust to grow on it, but we also used it like without biocrust to see if it held the soil and if it was able to. So yeah, so absolutely there are um there are like what are some mechanisms we can have for soil stability? Right. Um absolutely. Uh dirt was just one example. But the thing that's cool about biocrust is it's a living organism that can like Fill in cracks and it can grow. Like it actually, it's part of the system. Like you're seeing, like you're seeing with your site. Like you have these conditions. Your soil stabilization is pretty, pretty phenomenal. And it's not something that you. Well, it only it once you stabilize the soil. That's yes. kind of where Robert exactly. was getting at. Yeah. He was like, we didn't yeah. see this for ever, and now you guys have stopped the sheet erosion. Now we're seeing it, and we're seeing the reveg. Yeah. And it, it doesn't take five centimeters, like one no, millimeter. No, one oh, no, 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 we tried to get in these sandy, highly erodible sites, and my was like, ha, ah, no, no, no <laughs> yeah. right, yeah. We didn't save yeah, we soils. Yeah, we were like, it'll, it'll grow fast, it'll be fine. Yeah. With it, have it does, we didn't put enough on, that is a really good question. We didn't put enough on, we wanted it to like, kind of like that island idea where you put it in and you hope it like grows. So ours was a pretty thin, so, I don't think it actually changed anything to soil moisture or anything. I don't think so, because the, the the limited amount we put on. Because we were just hoping, like, here's a tiny crop and you will go to your tent. Um, that was what we were thinking, but at enough density, absolutely. But yeah. the conditions it changes in that five centimeters where the seed bank, 
Like I have sampled the yeah. little crust for stability, and when you've got a good crust, you have you have like oh yeah moisture below it. And oh yeah, it's pretty pretty cool to see. Yeah, and like all the filament mm -hmm. like holding it together, yeah. you're like good job, good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that is a really good point. Like it's so it's just at that top that top surface, but it actually has it. It's whole it has an impact. Yeah, it's like maintain yeah. soil moisture. And if you're not if you're not losing that topsoil and it's maintaining, you probably have different particle sizes and it, yeah, so it's it's well, that's the key is screaming yeah. for like don't touch me for a hundred years. Yeah. And everything will be fine. <laughs> but we can we're trying to make it faster. Right. <laughs> like to see that. Um so okay, so but this one, again, I realized I did this and this like goes against everything that I normally do, but I'm like, throw it all on there. So I'm not giving you any context to any of the study. <laughs> 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 this is like not what I do at all. And like if my students see it, I'd be like, <laughs> what's the context? And now I'm doing it, but I'll walk you through it. So just I can't go back actually. So that's okay. 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 So, so we did a follow-up because cheat grass thought was bad, but it was really informative and it was really exciting. So what we did was we were like, there's something going on with the nutrients, right? So what we did, this is a greenhouse study, but we had, um, this is the Tuolumne Desert, but and we used um, Vegetaria California, so like a perennial grass species. And we had field collected soil, we added carbon, we added carbon and nitrogen, we added just nitrogen, or, Carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus, nitrogen, and phosphorus, and nothing. And then with and without biocrust. So what we found, biocrust, plants were bigger. Yeah, nutrients plants get bigger too, we're yeah. excited about figuring that one out. You're welcome, world. <laughs> and, and nutrients, plants get bigger. Um, wow. yeah. But that what we were finding, and you, this is where, like we actually were finding that it was like the nutrients Plus, the biocrust had yeah. the absolute biggest plants. So it was like that combination. So your answer, yeah. Pedro. So, yeah, so the yeah. nitrogen. And, and we were thinking with the carbon and hydrogen and phosphorus. The nitrogen, yeah. And yes, and the nutrients, yeah. Phosphorus. We, we were thinking of avoiding phosphorus, and we said that's for another day. But um, the carbon was glucose. So we're thinking where else? We were trying to like get it trapped in the microbial community. So that did seem like it worked. Um, mm -hmm. But just to show you. Oh, no, 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 no. I was going to say, um, if you're going to do biocrust, you should also do fertilizer. Because yes. There's so much of a difference between no fertilizer and mm -hmm. just biocrust. Exactly. And that's severely pretty... degraded. You may not get biocrust yeah. until you yeah. fertilize. Yeah, you stabilize the soil well. and you fertilize. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly well, right. Well, so would you say, okay, you're probably using it. No, no, go for it. Because, I mean, organic matter is always what I think is needed. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, exactly. that's kind of like, Exactly. I want carbon to be better. Yeah. <laughs> we want carbon, but we also need those nitrogen. Well, so we're also always, in, we've actually had samples question that our nutrients and our carbon and our organic matter was so low. They're like, something's broken. We're like, no, that's our soil that we're dealing with. Like, it's that bad. It's too long time. Is it? Yeah. So I mean, we're these say, degraded sites. Yeah, these degraded sites. So we, so, so this is where we were thinking. And again, we added for yummy carbon. So on this one, we were trying to get those microbes like cranking. So that was the point of this study. So that was the goal. But what I think is, so, so these are all planted the exact same day, exact same time. Um, this is with bio. So this is the nutrient one. This is with biocrest. Long, long term, you see in ratios like maybe a lot less of nutrients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you might see like a pulse. So you might see. But you might not see like it stabilized to be like highly nutrient rich. Over, over time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and the carbon might become more important. And if you use, and I would say more of like a recalcitrant. So like if you use a carbon that's like not sugar. So yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That's a very good point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so the time, this was like, this was a greenhouse study. Yeah, yeah. So this over time. This is like this was um, three months in the greenhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, there's something that I'm worried, worried about fertilizers and nutrients. Like, you get that in yeah. three months. Mm -hmm. 
And then you're waiting these plants just like, well, crap, what do we do now? Well, well that's which is kind of what you're saying. That's, that's the conversation. Yeah. That's the conversation we're having now. Is like, are you going to create really weak yeah. plants? Right. For the next 50 years, if you reduce them because it looks like oh, they're coming like down the from their, yeah, because they're coming down from yeah, their like, yeah. it's it's doing this yeah. from eight years ago when they got juiced and like emerged for the first time, yeah. and now they're doing this and it's like, do you yeah. reduce them or do you yeah. just you know? Right. Yeah. 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 So we generally we reduce them not fertilizing for that very reason. <laughs> That's, but, but organic matter always. But we have the money to do it. Okay. We're talking about EPA now. That's right. I go back to Right. They're old enough for the future. They kind of all of the If you can't get something else on there, that might be what you need. You, you may need, need to actually push. just keep yeah. them going. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. I like, so you might have yeah. that like initial. That's, so that's where I would make the argument that I, I mean, I'm not, you can have bigger problems adding nutrients. So I'm, I'm not saying like everyone needs nutrients added all the time, but yeah. this was pretty interesting to us. And what we want to do is this up here. Um, so use these moss biocrust out in the field. So this was a greenhouse study. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Robert Powell says hi. You guys, yeah, okay. have, you two have spoken. Yes, we have. But it was like a reference. Yeah, I would like to talk to you. Yeah, he says say yeah. hi. And we want to try and plug the mic. Let's see how. Okay. Cool. Yeah, actually, that could be. But yeah, I do think because I think they function differently in floodplains. Uh -huh. They don't see them completely, but like that compared to like my same brush at my house is completely different. They do, absolutely, and they're happy probably have more moss. Probably in the like, things. Things. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, so this is, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. But yeah, this is like, this was like that greenhouse study that we were like, very cool. Mm -hmm. well, let's try this outside. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is like, this was way more like dramatic than we thought. Short term, again, we added the short carbon, et cetera, et cetera. But I think out in the field, if we can get that, we can, we, there's an experiment just waiting right there. How many grass did you have? Uh, well, <laughs> if you ask them, they're like, we're full. Don't ask us to do anything else. Um, right now, I think there's only like four grams. Okay, so this gets to the question of like, what do we do with the cheat grass, etc.? So Carrie um, Habrilla, who's now assistant professor at CSU, I think, so we have this big Powell Center working group. We had a bunch of biocrust students from Southern California, Berkeley, Stanford, 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 Common thread is over Matt Bauer, led by Matt Bauer, who's great. But this is a meta analysis of all these studies that looked at all these different components, these explanatory variables, and how did that relationship with biocrust impact germination, survival, growth, cover, and overall performance. So the, the red is negative, um, the green is positive, and then this, there's sometimes just when you do these big studies, there's so much variability. Um, but what you find is that actually, for a lot of these, not all of them, but germination, you can, when they, if you think of you have this physical crust layer, that germination could be hindered, right? That's where it exactly. Yeah. yeah. So you, so with this physical, but once you get past that initial barrier, so that's where seedlings could come in, or transplants, or something else. Once you get past that, you generally have bigger growth. So you generally have like bigger plants and biocrust is actually advantageous with that plant soil interaction. But it actually is, as much as I love biocrust, we often talk about it as like this altruistic thing. Where it's like, no, it's got to get its own nutrients. It's got to get its own. It's competing for space as well as plants. I can physically see it. If you're, if you're physically trying to seed on top of the exactly. biocrust, it's just like, ding, ding. yeah. yeah. And there's it's like the seed is just like bouncing yeah. off of it. Exactly. Whereas if it's not there, and you see, and then it gets established, and then it solidifies on top, yeah. which is the experience that we've had. It seems to be because you already had the because we had nothing. We had zero growing. We fertilized the crap out of it. Stuff's yeah, growing, and now the bio crust where where it wasn't germination happening, the bio crust is formed and taking the extra. Taking yeah, and, and then now you right? yeah 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 that's very cool. That's, that's <laughs> Oh, seed bank? No, oh, I'm like, but do, do we can bring up the seed bank here. I'm okay. We can't go back. So no, 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 no. 
No, this is never going to lay on one of us. It's okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah keeps that, like those functional groups in check and keeps them spaced out and allows them to only use the right amount of resources and yeah. how much we've utterly screwed it all up. Really. <laughs> really. But as restoration coaches, we're optimists, right? Uh, <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> 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 about this was already super fun and I got this is great this is super fun but I do have a question for all of you and I this Ooh, I have a survey so don't answer it think about it in your head so this is a question I actually started it in like my postdoc or maybe my PhD like a number of years ago but I would have never once had the same like proportion of responses and you can only ask answer one you cannot say all of the above you can't add your own. There's rules. You can't add your own. No, I don't oh. like what you're saying restoration umbrella. Ecological restoration. Yes. 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 Which ecosystem? No all umbrella. <laughs> like if, if you were gonna go to the global SER conference and you had people from you from Darwin, Australia this year? Yeah, so if it's I know this sounds so far away. <laughs> Um, but like your drylands, you got your Floridas, you got your Siberias, you got whatever. Doesn't matter. What do you think is the biggest? I'm telling you, I have never once had ratio answers be the same, and ever. Like, yeah, yeah. But think, of, yeah, yeah. But don't change your answer because you think other people are. Yeah. And there's no wrong or right answer. No, so I I haven't done that, and I think that there's it, it's 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 a little sad. I don't. Yeah, yeah. And we're on the range, and like we do deal with the disturbances, like we often deal with cattle and other disturbances, and there's like some cool stuff coming out of that. But yeah, I'm more in the like. My answer yeah. is easy. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. We'll do. I actually should. This is like, oh, Cass, you would love this. I should like admit <laughs> this. Yeah. I needed to make this a study because I wanted to refine this over the years, but I can't because I'm like, I need these exact answers to match. You need more information about your participants. Exactly. Yeah, I'm in an IRB and I can't do all that. So I will not use this in any way. This is just purely information. Okay, so B. Right? You literally buy 
by every worship that will be in the entire world. Oh, so you got to go big. Oh, so, oh, this is also, and I love this, this is also what happens. There's like barking, like, come on. Come on. It has to be. This is why it has to happen. Well, in reality, it's all five. It's all five, exactly. And that's the, that's the reason. <laughs> like, this was on purpose. There's, I give this to my undergrad classes, and it's very stressful for them. Oh. So it's all, and I have to be like, you're not going to get graded. There's <laughs> no <laughs> she asked me to have an opinion. No, no, I think it's just like it is like it's kind of it's because that's the fun. I think we all I think everyone in this room just knows that they're all it's all fun, right? Yeah, right? But it's really so the numbers are survey says so four for climate change, four for I'll just put mine in there, four for ecology is complicated. Um C said nobody in here. D Four and E three, very even oh, split. Wow. Except oh, wow. yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. All three, there's no answer. So it means that we got our we got our work cut out for us. Yeah. Oh, is basically. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, 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 this is way better than what I was going to do. For five bucks a month, we have a program. They, you could, yeah, the AI chatbots, they'll take all the ums and ahs out of this whole thing and make it like. So I don't really. No, it's know. real. I think that's a really good point. I think right? I was thinking about. <laughs> 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 we don't have one, but I think. Okay, so here's the punchline. It's not a punchline. It's not a punchline. Here's here's what I think we all can agree that we have to be creative in what we're doing, and we have to think creatively and adapt and try to be flexible, right? So like I think that's part of why I wanted to end here. Like like thinking creatively is something that we all have to do. We want to or not, we have to, right? But so that's where, I, like, you know, these were two options. Um, seed bank and biocrest, the two that I talked about, but there's so many, and we can all take them in any direction. So that's my thing. It's not really a first line, but that's my take home. Take home. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. so, like, we can keep talking, but yeah. let's like. Yeah. Because then you, you yeah. can bring it back up yeah, and go to whatever you want if you want. Yeah. So that 